recently makes more sense to me. I'm sure it did everyone else. And I'm going to ask a question of, of the paper, and then I'll get back to the audience. And um, once again, I'd like to remind the speakers if you could keep it short and short. For Mr. Green, what does Islam say about the concept that Jesus took the sins of all the people? Does it mean that now the people of this world are free to do sins as they will and will not be accountable for that? And <clears throat> what does Islam say about this? See, <clears throat> I think there is a principle you have to observe in dialogue which it's been difficult to do today. And the principle is, is that you shouldn't ask me to comment about the theology of Kofi. Yeah? I mean, I can take Islam's perspective. You know, our perspective is quite simple. Everybody is accountable for their own sins. So if you want to ask, what is the position of sin in Islam? Well, I'll answer that question. I'm not going to explain you know, Christian theology or even counter it, but I will tell you, what do we believe? We believe that everybody is individually responsible for their sin. Adam was responsible for what he did, Eve was responsible for what she did. They repented to God, God forgave them. However, their action had a consequence, and the consequence of their action was they were expelled from paradise, and they were put on this earth, and the rest of the descendants of Adam and Eve, all of us sitting here today, we live on this earth and we're going to be here for a time and God is going to ask us about what we have done. Now we believe as Muslims that the way to get God's forgiveness is by number one believing in God, not making partners with God. But when we have done something wrong, that we number one acknowledge the sins that we have committed. So we acknowledge that I've done something wrong. Secondly, I feel bad about it. I feel remorse, I feel regret. Thirdly, I ask God truly from my heart to forgive me for the wrong things that I have done. Then also I commit myself sincerely not to do that evil thing again. If I have done something in addition that is harming another person, because some sins are between me and God. Some sins involve harming other people. If I've harmed somebody else, I have to do my best to try and make that wrong thing right. If I stole from someone, I have to give it back to them. If I backbit someone, I have to say nice things about them, like I said bad things. Or even I could ask that person to forgive me for what they have done. That's justice because it's not just me and God now, you've hurt someone else. So you have to try and get that other person's forgiveness. This, by the way, I have to mention, is why murder is one of the most severe sins. Because when you've taken someone's life, how are you going to ask them to forgive you for that? So, this is how we believe the sins are forgiven. We don't believe that God cannot look upon man's sin. It's in fact almost, I won't say the opposite, but it's almost the opposite. In fact, we believe as Muslims, that God created us, our nature is that we make mistakes, we disobey God. But it's in this process, you see, where we commit sins, and then we ask God to forgive us for our sins, and God forgives us. That's how we have a personal relationship with God. That's how we come to know that God is so merciful, that whatever you do, if your sins are as big as the heavens and the earth, and you come to God truly, sincerely, God will forgive you, and you feel the burden of that sin being lifted from you. So in our idea, there is no need for anyone to die for the sins. And also we don't believe God would punish me and you for what Adam and Eve did. That was their sin. They get, they get the consequence of that. You and me, we have to face what we have done. We believe every child is born sinless. Sinless. Naturally wanting to worship God. It's only our environment that takes us away from that. So this is our perspective on the issue of sin and repentance. Thank you very much. Is it written anywhere in the Bible, Jesus is God from priest? I assume it's from the chaplaincy because I don't see any priests here. And I assume it's aimed at coffee. So if you could please keep it short also. Now, 
it's written about two or three times explicitly that Jesus is God in the Bible. I can give you quotations, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7, or you can even go to John chapter 10 verse 30, anytime you want, that it's written explicitly, because Christians do believe that Jesus is God. Thank you very much. Um, can I take a question from the gentleman in the shirt there? Um, we are living at a time where the rule of God Almighty is not uh, predominant on the earth, where the rule of a religion or uh, something which is revealed from God what does not have any uh, um, does not have anything to do with Parliament or any type of constitution that legislates. Can you tell us what, uh, from a Christian perspective? what uh, uh, the clerics or those who are at high rank in the Christian faith, what they think of this. Should Christianity have something to do with parliament and should it have some kind of uh, effect on the legislation which takes place in parliament and also the same thing from a Muslim perspective. So does God have the right to rule and should we implement by God's rule on earth? And will this make a difference to our planet? Thank you very much. Okay. One more question is, does religion incorporate politics? And this question is asked of both speakers. Um, of course, Islam uh, has a very clearly defined system of life that includes modes of behavior, uh, laws, rules, regulations that we believe are from God. And this law that is from God is a blessing. It is not like it is mentioned, for example, that the law is a curse. No, this is not what we believe at all. The law of God is based upon God's perfect and complete knowledge of the human being. The happiest life you could ever live is when you follow God's rules. Because God created us, He knows us better than we know ourselves. So if we were only to follow that guidance and those laws that are from God, the human condition would be so, so much better. Of course, human beings are imperfect. God's law is perfect. So we cannot really expect that there will be complete perfection because there are always the mistakes and the errors of the human beings. But what we can say is that if we were to follow God's guidance, then our life would be the best that it could be in this life. The perfect life, of course, only ultimately is going to be in the life to come. Uh, so yes, definitely, I think that if we followed God's guidance and God's laws, uh, the world would be a lot better place. I am... Um I do agree with what he says, that if we follow God's guidance and God's laws, the world would be a better place. But seeing that we're talking about Jesus, you know, I'm not even disputing this. I, earlier on, said that when Jesus came on the scene, he was to establish a kingdom. That's what he thought. He says, your kingdom come. Even in the Christian's Lord's Prayer, it's our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, that kingdom come. You see, He's here to establish a government. He's here to establish God's laws. He's here to, to imprint them on your hearts. That's what he wants to do. And if we would follow that, then I agree, we won't have any problems at all. I want to read a question of the slip. It says, this is for Brother Kofi. Why did God sacrifice his son for our sins? Can he just forgive our sins, just like that? Okay, this is going to be another tricky one. And I'm going to try and keep it short. You see, again, going back to the garden, obviously, I just heard, and I didn't even know this, that in Islam, you, every man's sin is their sin. But you see, in Christianity, because Adam and Eve sinned, all their fruit and everything that came out was tainted with sin. That's what Christians believe. That's what our Bible teaches us. And the reason, and our evidence is this. You look a kid in a room, 
Don't bring the kid out. Don't do anything 